In lesson three, we're going to look at how to add and subtract rational expressions. So the first thing we're going to do to refresh your memory is just look at a fraction example with numbers. And when you add or subtract fractions, the one rule that you have to remember is that you always have to have a common denominator. So you have to have the same thing in the denominator in order to be able to add or subtract. And to do the addition or subtraction once you have your common denominator, you actually will just add or subtract depending on the operation across the top, so whatever numbers are on top, so across the top, and then you're going to keep the denominator. So add or subtract across the top, but then keep the denominator for the bottom of your fraction. So in this case, I'm going to have one fraction when I add these. I'm going to add across the top, so 4 plus 1 gives me 5, and then I keep the denominator. And then that's it. You always, too, want to check to make sure that your fraction is completely re completely reduced, and in this case it is, so I don't have to go any further. I'm all set. So then the next example, we have rational expression, so now we have some variables involved. I'm going to do the same process, check to see if the denominators are the same, which in this case they are. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to write this as one fraction. I'm going to keep the denominator. And then I'm going to just add across the top. So x plus 1 is just going to be x plus 1. Last step is to make sure this is fully simplified, which in this case I have an x squared minus 1 in the bottom, which I can factor because it's a difference of perfect squares. So it's going to be two sets of parentheses, square root each piece. So I have x and 1. And then you have opposite signs because it's a difference of perfect squares. Cancel out anything that's the same. So we're left with 1 over x minus 1. The next example, you have, again, common denominator. Um, so you're going to go ahead and you're going to keep the denominator. And in this case, we're going to subtract the top. Whenever you subtract, though, what I would say right away, put parentheses around that second term because you have to remember to subtract off each piece. So up top, it's really going to be 2x minus 5 minus, in parentheses, x minus 3. So this will become 2x minus 5, and then we're going to distribute that negative. So it's going to be minus x plus 3 all over x minus 2. And then we're just going to simplify. So combine like terms. So 2x minus x gives me x. Negative 5 plus 3 is going to give me minus 2 all over x minus 2. So if I divide the same thing by itself, it's going to cancel and just give me 1, or I'm going to get 1. So the answer for this one is just going to be 1. So now let's look at some examples that have denominators that are different. So if you are given a set of expressions or fractions where you have um, different denominators, the first thing you have to do is you have to find the least common denominator. So we have to find the LCD or the least common denominator. And then once we find that, we're going to rewrite our fractions using that new denominator so that we can repeat the process that we just did in the above examples. So when you look at these, we have 14 and 30 are my two denominators. And basically, you want to find the smallest number that both 14 and 30 go into. Some of the time, it's going to be easy to see it. Other times, it might be hard to see, well, what's the smallest number that 14 and 30 both go into? So a strategy you can use is something that we did in Unit 1, where you take each number and you break it down as um, a product of its factors or its prime numbers. So I break down 14, and I could break it down into 7 and 2. And 7 and 2 are both prime numbers, so I can't break it down any further, so I just leave that. So 7 times 2 are the prime numbers that multiply to give me 14. I can do the same thing with 30. So I start off with thinking, okay, what numbers go into 30? First one that comes to my mind is 5 and 6. If you did 3 and 10, that would be fine as well. And then I look, 5 I can't break down any further, but 6 I can break down as 2 and 3. So basically, if you want to get 30, you would multiply the prime numbers 2, 3, and 5. These numbers that I circle at the bottom always have to be the prime numbers. 
So then what happens in order to find the LCD, you use these to help you. So you basically find the smallest combination of all of the circled numbers, and you don't include any repeats. So see how I have two twice? I'm just going to only use it once when I find the LCD. I don't need to include it as a factor twice because it's a common factor. And then I include all of the other numbers though. So 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 will give me all of the um, prime factors that they have in common or the factors needed to create the LCD. So then you would multiply all of those out and you get 210. So that means 210 is the smallest number that both 14 and 30 go into. Now if you could have figured that out without doing this process, you don't have to do this process. This is just a strategy to help you. So then what we do is we go back to the problem and I'm going to first rewrite this as two fractions that have a denominator of 210. So that means each of these needs to get converted into an equivalent fraction that has a denominator of 210. So first thing I do is I ask myself, well, 14 times what gives me 210? So 14 times 15, because you could just divide 210 divided by 14 and get 15. So then I have to multiply the top by 15. So 3 times 15 is going to get me 45. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. So 30 times what gives me 210? 30 times 7, so then you're going to multiply the top by 7. So we get 49. And then we go back to the process that we did in those first few examples. Keep the denominator. Add the numerators. So 45 plus 49, we get 94. So if this answer can be simplified, we're going to simplify it. And I notice that they're both even numbers. So I know that 2 goes into both of them. Um, so if I divide both the top and bottom by 2, I end up with 47 over 105. And that's the smallest I can go. I can't reduce this any further. So that would be your final answer. So that's adding fractions that don't have common denominators. So let's look at some algebraic expressions. So this is just a set of steps that we just went through. Um, so on the next page we have some algebraic expressions now that do not have common denominators. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take each denominator and you want to rewrite it so that it's a product of its factors. So kind of just like what we did, we just rewrote it. We took each denominator and rewrote it using um, the prime factorization. We're going to do the same idea except for we're going to actually factor these using one of the factoring techniques we learned. So I'm going to just keep the numerators for now and I'm going to rewrite that bottom. And that's a quadratic factoring. So I need to add to negative 2 but multiply to negative 3. So I'm multiplying to a negative. I know it's going to be x and x. I'm multiplying to a negative. So it'll be opposite signs. I'm adding to a negative. So it's going to be the bigger number will be negative. So negative 3 times positive 1 will get me negative 3. But when I add them, I'll get negative 2. And then I'm going to rewrite the next one. The bottom here can be factored as a difference of perfect squares. So I'm going to have square root of each piece and then opposite signs. So then what I do is I compare my denominators. And I see that they have in common an x minus 3. So similar to the prime factorization, we didn't repeat it. We just did it once. So I used it once. That prime, It was like 2. So I kept in that last example, I kept the 2 only one time. And then I use the other denominators. So then I have the other factors here. So x plus 1 and x plus 3. So that's the least common denominator. That's the smallest combination of um, what both of these two pieces will go into. So that means I need to change each of these fractions so that they have a denominator of x minus 3 times x plus 1 times x plus 3. So the next step is going to be, let's rewrite it so it has that as a denominator, x minus 3 times x plus 1 times x plus 3. So I'm going to rewrite each fraction. And then what I have to do is I have to ask myself, well, what did I do to this denominator here to get this denominator? 
So the only difference is I multiplied this by an x plus 3. So since we had to do times x plus 3 on the bottom, I also have to do it on top. So on top, it's going to be negative 2 times x plus 3. So basically, if you imagine canceling those, you get back to the original. So that's why it works. Then I go to the next piece, and I had to multiply by an x plus 1. So I do the same thing on top. So 3 times x plus 1. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to distribute. And we're going to make this one big fraction. So we have x minus 3, x plus 1 times x plus 3 all on the bottom. I'm going to distribute this. So I have negative 2x minus 6 plus this 3 being distributed. 3x plus 3. Combine your like terms here. So we have x minus 3 on top when we combine those. x minus 3, x plus 1, x plus 3 all on the bottom. And then you're going to see that these cancel, so we're left with 1 over x plus 1 times x plus 3. So let's try another example like that. So the difference here is we have subtraction, but it's going to be the same process. We just have to remember that when we get to the stage where we're going to be actually subtracting, that we remember to distribute the negative. So we will start the same way. So we have 2x minus 2. We're going to go ahead and we're going to factor the bottom there. So we have two sets of parentheses. So we have xx. We're adding to um, 4, multiplying to 3. So we're going to have the same sign. They're both going to be positive. So we're going to have 3 and 1 are going to work. Then we're going to keep the minus, we're going to do x minus 1, and then we have on the bottom two sets of parentheses, we're going to have the same sign and they're both going to be positive, so we're going to have 3 and 2. So then we have to decide on the LCD, so what's the least common denominator? It's the smallest combination you can make that includes all of um, all of the factors. So we have to include x plus 3. We only have to include it once though. Then we have to include x plus 1 and x plus 2. So now I'm going to rewrite this as my denominator of x plus 3, x plus 1, x plus 2. So I'm just rewriting each fraction with that new denominator. And then I'm going to go up top, and I'm going to ask myself, well, what did I change in the denominator? What did I multiply the denomina denominator by, which was x plus 2? So that means up top I have to multiply by x plus 2. And when we multiply up top now, you're you started with a binomial, and you're multiplying by a binomial. So we're going to have to use that box method to distribute and to multiply those. So up top we're going to have 2x minus 2 times x plus 2. And then on the next one here, we ask ourselves, well, what do we multiply the what do we multiply this denominator by to get to the new one? It's an x plus 1. So I'll multiply the top by x plus 1. And again, you have to put parentheses around the x minus 1 because it's a binomial times a binomial. So we have x minus 1 x plus 1, we will be distributing that negative 2 at some point once we get to the stage where these are simplified. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to figure out what these are off to the side so that I can plug them back in. So we have 2x minus 2, x plus 2, so we multiply, so we get 2x squared plus 4x on minus 2x, remember there's a minus here, and then minus 2 times positive 2 minus 4. So combine your like terms, we get 2x squared plus 2x minus 4 is all on top, and then I'm just going to carry along that denominator. 
Then I'm going to go to the other side here. We have x minus 1, x plus 1. So multiply, we get x squared, 1x, minus 1x, minus 1. These cancel. So we have um, x squared minus 1 all over x plus 3, x plus 1, x plus 2. And again, remember, you're subtracting off this entire piece. So that means when I combine these, so I'm going to combine the denominators. Those denominators are just going to stay the same. You do not distribute the negative in the denominator just because when you have a fraction, you only distribute it to either the top or the bottom. And you want the denominators to be the same, so I'm just going to distribute it up top. Um, because in order for this to still be negative on the outside, it has to just have a negative either on top or on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rewrite this. So I have 2x squared plus 2x minus 4. And then I'm going to distribute that negative up top. So minus x squared plus 1. We're going to combine any like terms. So keep the denominator. And my 2x squared minus x is just going to be an x squared. Keep the plus 2x. And then we have minus 4 plus 1 is going to be negative 3. And now we have to simplify what we're left with, which means I can factor that numerator. So hopefully I'll be able to cancel some stuff in the denominator with it. So we have two sets of parentheses. We have opposite signs because we're multiplying to a negative. So we're going to have positive 3 and minus 1. And then we cancel anything we can, which is the x plus 3. So my final answer will be x minus 1 over x plus 1 times x plus 2. So let's look at just a couple more that are much shorter than this one. So let's go to the next page. And this example here, you notice that these um, fractions are very similar, but the denominators are just slightly different. And if you remember, whenever you have x minus 7, that's the same thing as saying um, negative 1. times 7 minus x. So what that means is if I want to use my LCD over here as x minus 7, all I need to do is remember that this new fraction has to get multiplied by a negative 1 so that they're equivalent. Because 7 minus x is not the same as x minus 7. Um, x minus 7 is the same thing as negative 1 times 7 minus x. So in order to make this true, what I do is I rewrite this. And I'm going to multiply. I'm just going to do the multiplication in the top because, again, remember, we don't want to change. Um, we want the denominator to be equal. So I'm going to make the denominator x minus 7. So I can make that change because of this property. So then all you have to do is keep the denominator. And you have x squared distribute the negative, so minus 6x minus 7, and then we want to factor the top, two sets of parentheses, x minus 7 on the bottom, so x and x, opposite signs, um, so we're going to have negative 7 and 1, when you factor, cancel those out, we get x plus 1. And then our last one here, just to show you one other type, is whenever you have a whole number minus a fraction, remember, whenever this is true, you just put the whole number part over 1. So then what I have to do is I still have to figure out the LCD, but it's actually much easier because if this denominator is 1 and you have 3x plus 1 in the other denominator, your denominator, your LCD, is just 3x plus 1. So you just have to ask yourself, well, what did I have to do to that first fraction? to get 3x plus 1 in the denominator? Well, I had to multiply it by 3x plus 1. 
So up top, I multiply it by 3x plus 1. So 2 times 3x plus 1. And then the other one already has that denominator I need. So I just keep it. And then I can go ahead and rewrite this as one fraction. I can distribute that 2. So it's going to be 6x plus 2 minus 9. And then we just simplify. So we have 6x minus 7 over 3x plus 1. And if you can reduce, so if I could factor out a GCF up top, I would, or on the bottom and see if I can cancel anything. But in this case, I can't. So I'm done just leaving it like that.